Hey guys, welcome back to the Fashion Chalet Show. <coughs> Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Erica. I have been on YouTube for maybe almost two years now, and my channel is mainly beauty. But I do have a fashion blog where I post a lot of my outfits, and you can find that link down below. My blog is fashionchalet.net, similar to my username on YouTube. So today's video is going to be something that you guys requested, something that I enjoy filming, and it's another disappointing products video. The last time I filmed one of these, I decided to share with you guys not only the disappointing products but the better alternatives where you can save your money and not spend it on the more disappointing ones. So I thought I'd do that again today. It just makes sense to me. I feel like if I'm going to sit through a disappointing products video, I want a little guidance. I want to know what is worth spending my money on. Recent products that I've been testing, playing with, and that have just fallen flat. So without any further ado, let's just jump right in. So actually this first product, I don't have a better alternative because I haven't found anything similar to it whatsoever. And it is the Benefit Bathina Silk body glimmering balm. It's supposed to add shimmer and hydrate or moisturize your skin. It smells incredible. Everything in the skincare line by Benefit is owned by Louis Vuitton, so you're definitely getting quality. But with this particular product, I just wasn't impressed with this because I felt like it sat on my skin versus hydrating and penetrating and just moisturizing my skin. It just felt like it sat on top. It's messy. It's really hard to blend into the skin. I really don't like using it on my fingers. It does come with a little puff, which is good, but I feel like this doesn't pick up any product to put onto your skin with, so I wasn't impressed with any of this except for the scent, which is amazing. And of course, like always, Benefit's packaging is so adorable, so retro, so I do keep it in my bathroom because it does make for a cute decoration. But as far as the product, I was not blown away. This next one is a high-end brand as well, and I wasn't impressed because of how patchy and how quickly it's smeared on my lips. And it is the Butter London Lippy, I believe this is their Lippy Liquid Lipstick in Tea with the Queen. And it's a really light pale nude. The color is gorgeous. It smells like brownies and the product seemed to go on very nicely, very smoothly, but I could tell it was very patchy at the same time and I wasn't impressed with the color payoff. But on the other hand, the exact same product in a different color called Toff, T-O-F-F, is a beautiful mauve nude and this one wasn't patchy at all. It went on evenly and it stayed pretty long. I actually wore this to a barbecue dinner last weekend and I was impressed with how well this one wore versus this shade. So if you were looking into these liquid lipsticks from Butter London, skip on Tea with the Queen and go for a darker nude like Toff. Maybe stick to the darker shades because this light one was just so patchy. They smell great, they're pretty hydrating, they're comfortable, and they're not sticky, which I really liked. I just wasn't impressed with the fact that this one was so incredibly patchy. So I'd definitely pass on the lighter shades. This next product was something that I received, I believe, in a BoxyCharm a long time ago, like probably within one of the first three boxes when I signed up. And it's kind of just sat in my drawer, and every time I pull it out, I'm always disappointed. And I don't know why it hasn't made it into one of my previous disappointing videos, so I chucked it in for this one. And it's the Tarina Tarantino Eye Dream Hyper Light. It's supposed to be an under eye brightener or illuminator. I'm not so sure that it's supposed to conceal under eye circles, but it's supposed to brighten. This has the deepest, peachiest, orangey shade that I feel distracts from your foundation. If you put this on when you're done with your foundation, it's going to look very messy. It's not going to blend in well. The color is not flattering for any skin tone. I just found it very gooey, hard to blend, just was not impressed with this product. And speaking of concealers, I recently tried the Illuminati Highlighting and Concealing Pen from Wet n Wild in Ivory Into You, and this didn't conceal anything. I felt like it just kind of slid around my face as I tried to apply it, as I tried to blend it. Didn't conceal any dark circles I might have had that I wanted to hide, and it was just a patchy, patchy mess. When I went to set it with powder, it got really clumpy. I am actually going to throw this one into the garbage can when I'm done filming. I was that unimpressed. I was just that, that disappointed with this one. It's affordable, I believe, but I would highly recommend, whether it's a little bit cheaper than the one I'm going to recommend, fork over those extra two or three dollars for the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer, because this one blends like a dream. It's so creamy, and it gives you fantastic coverage from the drugstore pass on this one i was just so 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 almost depressed because i was really excited to try out this product so disappointed and i love wet and wild so i was really really upset that this didn't work out for me 
Actually, another Wet n Wild product that I was not fond of, when I swatched it, I loved it. And this may help you guys feel a little bit better if you couldn't get your hands on it. And it's the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Gold Bar, and it's a limited edition highlighter from Wet n Wild. It looks like a beautiful pale gold. I've heard that it's a good dupe for the Laura Geller Gilded Honey Highlight, and I tried it. This one is actually more peach. Gilded Honey is more gold. This swatches great on your hands, but once you go to put it onto your face, it's either patchy or you don't see anything at all. And as I started playing with it more and more, with my brush I started seeing and I started noticing that there's almost like an overspray of shimmer on top because once you start digging your brush or your finger deeper and deeper into this pan you're left with like a very dry powder so I don't know if it's a gimmick or what but this product didn't show up on my skin I just was so unimpressed and it was $3.99 for $1.99 more I would recommend getting the regular wet and wild larger size pans these are $4.99 or $5 even definitely worth it I'm wearing this one today in rose champagne glow a nice kind of pinky glow it's really pretty subtle it mixes in well with my blush this one i just wasn't impressed with next we have this blush from tarte in the shade peaceful when i first picked this up i was so excited because it looked like a beautiful shimmery peachy gold and when i swatched it it looked so pigmented when you go to apply this to your cheeks it's basically a disco ball of glittery glittery chunks on your skin you get more glitter than you do blush i just was not impressed and i think because there was so much glitter in it and so much glitter fallout that it made blending it out such a nightmare it was patchy it was horrible and i genuinely love the amazonian clay 12 hour blushes i have maybe five or six other ones that i adore celebrated is one of my favorites this blush in peaceful was way more glitter than blush and i would highly recommend that you guys pass on this one but if you're looking for a peachy blush that does have some sheen a little bit of shimmer but definitely more subtle then I would definitely tell you guys to check out the Essence Silky Touch blushes in Autumn Peach or in Baby Doll. Baby Doll is a softer pink whereas Autumn Peach has more of a peachiness to it and it's the one I'm wearing today. It's a really pretty color. These are so easy to blend out and I believe they're $2.49 so they're definitely affordable and definitely more worth the money. You could buy 20 of these and you would be set for life. This next product was so terrible. It's a brand new brush from the e.l.f. Cosmetics line and it is their contouring brush. It's so stiff, but it's very dense. So it definitely will pick up that contouring powder, but way too much. So once you pop it or stamp it onto your face, it's a very muddy line. And you'd be like, okay, well, I'll just get a fluffier brush to blend it out. It doesn't matter if you get another brush. I feel like it just puts on so much product, it's hard to blend it out. So you are left with a very muddy contour. This brush was so horrible. I'm so glad I tested this product out before applying it for a video because I would have been left with such a horrible, horrible contour. However, the e.l.f. blending brush that looks fan-shaped and also densely packed is a lot fluffier. Better for contouring. You can cream contour, you can powder contour. This one I think was three or four dollars. I believe this one was around six. I was not impressed with this guy, but this guy is amazing. I would stay away from the Wet n Wild Color Icon Pencil Shimmer Eye Pencils. These are very dry. They don't produce any pigmentation and the fact that they have shimmer in the pencil is very very irritating to the eye they're 99 cents but they're a waste of 99 cents so i would stay away from these i remember favoring this in a favorites video a couple couple months ago it was the first time i used it and since then i've realized i don't like it and it's the physician's formula organic wear light to natural tinted moisturizer and the reason why i don't like it now is because it sits on my skin it doesn't really penetrate into the skin i don't feel like it's hydrating the skin i feel like i'm wearing a very very thick foundation and I think the only reason why I liked it to begin with is because it did give me that coverage and I was so impressed that a tinted moisturizer acted almost like a foundation the way it evened out my skin but it was supposed to hydrate it and moisturize it at the same time this one however I know is a lot more expensive it's probably twice the price of this guy but I rather pay twice as much use less product and be happier and it's the origins Vita Zing SPF 15 energy boosting moisturizer with mango steen this is a sheer tint release so it does give you a little bit of glow a little bit of color that evens out that skin tone it's a great everyday product to reach for when you're doing your makeup just to run errands or whatever you don't necessarily need foundation this is my guy I highly recommend this way more than this one from physicians formula this next product is a foundation from Rimmel and it is their Stay Matte Liquid Mousse Foundation. I was intrigued, I remember at first, because it was a mousse foundation. I thought, oh wow, it's going to feel really soft, really frothy and hydrating on the skin. This is another product that sits on top of the skin. It doesn't look natural. It's very streaky if you try to blend it out, whether you use a damp beauty sponge or a brush. It's just a hot mess. Seven or eight bucks, I think. Save that seven or eight dollars. Not worth it. Walk over to Maybelline because I highly recommend their Dream Velvet Soft Matte hydrating foundations. It's the one I'm wearing today. It is kind of mousse-like, just like this one, but 
This one actually sinks into your skin. It looks very natural. It gives you an almost second skin flawless, soft, perfecting, evening out of the skin tone look. And I really like it because it's more natural and it feels like nothing. When I would wear this, not only did it feel like I was wearing foundation, not only did it feel heavy, but I could tell it would cling to any dry patches, which is not very, very flattering. So I would step away from the Rimmel one and check out the Maybelline one. I have a nail polish that really, really, really angered me. And it's the OPI polish from the Alice in Wonderland collection that came out earlier in the year. In the shade, oh my majesty, oh my god, this was so bad. It's a pearlized creamy white that has a slight sheen of baby pink to it. It does have a pearlized kind of frosted sheen to it. And it looked pretty when I painted my nails. It's basically the kind of nail polish you put on when you don't want to worry about them chipping, when you're traveling, when you're getting married, stuff like that. You don't want a vibrant color that's obvious when it chips, you'd reach for something like this. But this one, not only did it chip within like, I think it was two days of me wearing it and that never happens. I use the same top coat as always, but it would start to get really dark on the tips of my nails. Like, almost dirty, muddy. They start turning kind of black. Every time I wash my hands, I felt like the top coat was wearing away or something. I don't know. It was getting really dirty and it chipped so easily. I just wasn't impressed. So I'm definitely going to throw this guy out. This next product is from Ofra and it is their pressed powder oil control. It's just a translucent, white looking, but translucent pressed powder that's supposed to suppress the oil on your face, set your makeup, and just keep it all in place all day. Not only did this not control any oil on my face, it actually cast a white sheen on my makeup. It made me look like a ghost. It didn't blend out. I used this once and I will never use it again. If you are looking for an affordable pressed powder, don't go to Ofra for setting powder. Go to NYX. They have their HD finishing powders. This one's in banana, the shade I use to brighten the under eye area and to set my concealer with, but they also have a translucent one. These are nine bucks. Definitely worth it. And your money will definitely be much better spent. These next products are skincare related. So the first one is a chapstick from the brand Chapstick in pumpkin pie. It's a holiday, I guess, flavor or scent. And this didn't hydrate my lips whatsoever. I actually recently ran out of my Chapstick in cake batter, which smells like vanilla cake batter. It smells like cupcakes, like a bakery. It always, always hydrated my lips. It's what I would apply every night before bed. Recently picked up pumpkin pie. It did nothing. Pass on this. It's just a holiday gimmick. It doesn't work. This literally smells like Elmer's glue. I don't really want to spray Elmer's glue on my skin, and the instant I put it onto my face, yes, it did feel hydrated, but it also felt tingly. It felt weird, and after using it about two times, I just was scared it was going to break me out, so I don't really like this product. And no, I don't dislike Josie Marin. I think she's a wonderful person, and I think she's amazing. She has a lot of amazing organic makeup and things that I really like. So I don't know. Let me know. Does yours smell like Elmer's glue? Did I get an old one? Because I was really excited to play with this. I've heard rave reviews on it, and it just it didn't work for me. That concludes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know products that you've recently been disappointed by, so I can also stay away from them. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a beautiful Thanksgiving holiday to the those of you celebrating here in America, don't forget to follow me on Snapchat or my social media. See you guys next time. Mwah.